Hello and welcome to episode 21 of Paranormal United States. This is Massachusetts. Yeah, we are in Massachusetts this week. And in Massachusetts, the main city is Boston. Obviously very, very famous. Hmm. And in Boston is a place called Salem. Again, which is very famous, especially in our field. Yes. The Salem Witch Trials. Or the witches, the witch houses up there. Obviously, anything related to witchcraft, Salem seems to have a part in that. Definitely. So pretty famous. And, uh, one of my favourite shows growing up, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Okay. And uh, their cat was called Salem. Yes, it and, uh, was. Yeah, an episode where he went to Salem on a, on a school trip and she actually got the thing saying she was a witch as part of a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty good. Um, but so far, yeah, Massachusetts, let's do Boston, let's do an episode on Salem. Pretty famous, quite a lot to talk about. However, that's not the Salem that I want to talk about. Okay. So in South Boston, so the other side of Boston to where Salem is, is a little town called Quincy, which is a bit of a, a naval-like area of Boston. And based, or oh, it was also built there, which also lives there now, is the USS Salem, uh, which is named after the town of Salem. And it's a Des Moines-class heavy cruiser battleship, which was launched in 1947 and commissioned in 1949, serving around the Atlantic and the Mediterranean before it was decommissioned in 1959. So for 10 years, it was one of the, the like, biggest battleships that the US Navy had. And it's now home to the United States Shipbuilding Museum at Quincy, like I said, near to where she was actually built originally. And although her guns were never actually fired in wartime, just her presence, her domineering presence, as you can see, it's a very nice big battleship. Yeah, but just her presence served as like a stimulus to peace during the Cold yeah. War, during that like, post-World War II period. However, that isn't to say that she never saw her share of death, chaos, and tragedy. Oh, okay. Look forward to hearing this. <laughs> yeah, so the, the ship's most notable deployment, it's probably the thing it's most famous for, was in 1953, when it was sent to the Greek Ionian Islands after the Great Catalonia Earthquake, which was one of the worst earthquakes in Greek, Greek history, really. I think it was seven point something on the risk scale flattened That's many massive. cities in Catalonia and some of the islands and killed over 500 people. Christ. So the USS Salem was sent there and operated as a hospital and the morgue. It stored hundreds of bodies of those that died in the earthquake and many of them never left the ship. They're still aboard looking for loved ones, some looking for the saviours. But they are still wondering the endless maze of narrow, dimly lit hallways that lead to pitch black rooms and steep, rusted staircases. While much of the ship has been converted to museum displays, some rooms have been left alone. There's a dentist room that's still got dentist equipment, chairs, oh God. false teeth in there, just been left as it was since the 50s. The third ward room, or mess hall, which stands right above the makeshift morgue that they used at the earthquake recovery and aid. Uh, basically, it's just a big freezer. And it's this area that's said to have the most sort of paranormal activity. Okay. Uh, because when, when earthquakes happen, especially big ones, they can cause gas lines to break mm -hmm. and explode, causing fires. And there's quite a number of fire-related deaths that occurred. Oh, well, they ended up dying on the ship. And that can explain the unexpected smell of smoke and ash. Okay. That many visitors that come onto the warship actually can smell it as they're walking around. Okay, that's like weird. Going like a tour of the museum and that. But yes, they can smell like, like ash and smoke, really. So one of these, I believe, to have succumbed to their fatal fourth degree burns, it's called the Burning Man. It's been described as a spectre that smells like death. So they see the figure and they can smell like death and fire when they see him. And there's 
the tour guys, because you can go on ghost tours of the ship. Like, you can also stay overnight as well and do your own like, investigations. Oh, that'd be cool. You can bring your own team or they have their own people there you can do investigations with and stay Amazing. overnight in the, in the in the ship. Sounds actually pretty cool. Yeah, that does sound pretty cool. A, bit, like, a ship isn't something we really like haunted no. warship is quite a quite a unique one really. Yeah, but I suppose there's yeah, over time, over the years it was even just the years it was commissioned for, I suspect that it must have had a few people die on there as well. Yeah, there was. There's um a few workers died, um and there was one incident where some sailors on another ship had been injured. I think it was an explosion on another ship. And they brought it to the sailor to get aid and they ended up dying. Oh wow. On the on the ship and like I say a couple of um there was a mechanic uh, called John and his presence has been seen in the anchor room quite a few times. He used to work in the maintenance before he died. Okay. And his spirit was the first tour guide of the warship. So visitors walking around the warship would be like, Oh, that was a, a good tour guide just had. And the people were there like, Who's no tour guide? What? And it'd be this John that has been showing him around. He was showing people around as a ghost. Yeah. People thought, <laughs> people he, was, thought he was real. Yeah. So that was the first tour guide was this uh, there. That's insane. Guy. So you have to go up to a tour guide and press them to see if they're real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just like poking. Are you John? <laughs> oh, that's mad. Yeah, I hope it was a good tour. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, I suppose someone that went there 50 years ago would know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ins and outs of it. It would be mad being the people working there now and like, people telling you, oh, yeah, that was a really good tour guide we had. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's brilliant. It's just me here. Like. <laughs> wow. So yeah, so the the, the morgue area again, same area. Also with houses, the young Greek girl that's been seeing a young girl, mm-hmm. a dark taunting entity, shadow figures, and the violent hellhound with oh. a heart stopping growl that's been heard oh, on God. a number of occasions. Jesus near, Christ! Near that morgue area. Not sure I want to go there. <laughs> Maybe a trower. <laughs> Among the other exciting residents, uh, there's a ghost of a former cook who maintains the kitchen area, keeping it tidy and organised after other people make it a mess. And on the flip side, there's a spirit of a man in one of the mess halls. That he likes to drag the chairs, knock them over, and he plays a mess. You've got one ghost making a mess. Yeah, and then another one tied up after it. So, <laughs> it's a perfect combination. <laughs> there seems to be quite a lot going on. Yeah, quite. Uh, and some of the people that work at the, obviously it's a museum now, and uh, you can go visit the archives there as well. But the uh, Peter Blumberg, who's the ship museum's printer, he was walking down in a hallway near the back of his ship, and suddenly a large male figure appeared several feet in front of him. He made eye contact with the figure who gave him a look that suggested, what do you want? Don't bother for me. Oh, wow. Before it turns and walks silently down the staircase. Oh, Christ. That was the only incident that this particular person had, but obviously one he never, yeah. never forgot. They knew that there was nobody else in that area at the time. Uh, make an impression on you, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Definitely. This is seemed quite of a, like, what do you want? Like, leave me alone. <laughs> like, okay. No, no arguments. No <laughs> arguments. Again. <laughs> yeah. Other workers, uh, actually, including the ship's archivist, have reported hearing footsteps and voices calling them when there's, there's nobody. Nobody around here, the name being shouted, and there's literally nobody in that area. Quite a few panel investigation shows have been, including ghost hunters, and they captured uh, quite a few EVT recordings of banging noises and what sounded like a woman's voice. Okay. As well as unusually high EMF readings throughout the ship. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's no ship. It's lots of, obviously, it's a lot of metal equipment and stuff, yeah. So, we know, but the also that that could explain some hallucinations or people hearing stuff that's not there because yeah. of the, like, the magnetic in the, in the air. So, could explain yeah. some of it, but 
they've also captured women's voices and banging. Yeah, and where pe- people are seeing other images and, and spirits and spirit tour guides, that's definitely not other sort of environmental yeah. sounds and, and whatnot, is it? So, it's like full body. Yeah. Like there's a person showing yeah, me around the ship. That's not the metal machinery doing that. Well, you maybe it is, I don't know, but that's insane. It's a big boat as well. It's a mean looking boat. Yeah, like I said, once you yeah, get low deck and just loads of hallways and rooms and like, yeah. it is a maze down there and you just get lost. And... So when like the people that work there obviously know where they're going, they, when they see someone and they know there's going to be no one in that area. Yeah. And then they know that it's uh, something a bit unusual. Yeah, and I suppose if there's, it's a big ship and after hours and that, I suppose, or where there's no people, members of the public there, it's got to be pretty empty. Good thing, yeah. so that's spooky. Yeah. <laughs> I love to go there, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, somewhere different that mm-hmm. you don't normally associate with sort of paranormal sort of activity as such, but I suppose it's as good as place as any, especially yeah. if it goes, yeah. carries a lot of people, it's been to, to sort of environmental disasters and whatnot, so. I suppose like obviously ones that I've seen sort of actually have been to war zones and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. It's like there's a lot of ghosts around battlefields and yes. cemeteries of like war cemeteries and stuff. So a war ship. Yeah. Yeah. Right Should be no different really, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Because when out at sea with them, it'd be a bit more. Oh, God. Can't get away. The worst one would be a submarine. You're oh, stuck God. under the sea in a submarine and there's all these <laughs> ghosts there. It's freaking out. But yeah, like you say, out at sea and all this happening, that'd be weird as hell. But yeah, so that was Massachusetts and the USS Salem. 